Hi everybody, Craig here. Welcome to episode 15 of my 1 vs 4 Age of Wonders 3 playthrough series. In this series, I'm playing against 4 Emperor AI that are on a team against me, and I'm playing as the Shadow Elf Sorcerer, Malice Nightlord. In our last episode, we were able to successfully eliminate another of our opponents, and that means at this point in the game we've now successfully eliminated two of our opponents. So last time we actually took out Thanis of House Ineoch, the High Elf Warlord, and he was able, we were able to get him to surrender to us, and we now own his throne city here of uh, Biraneth, and we have Thanis himself as a hero, along with his stack here of some pretty decent units. So at that point in the game, like I said, we're now uh, two down, two to go. We can see here the terrain of Edward Portsmith, the human dreadnought, so that's probably who we're going to be attacking next. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to do that in this episode. However, before I dive into this episode, I did want to give a quick shout out to a couple of individuals who left some fantastic comments on the last episode. The first of those is from My Brain Hurts, and Brain left a comment indicating that it was kind of painful for him to watch some of the battles in the last episode, in particular my battles against Thanos here when I was sieging Thanos' city here, uh, Valp. And in particular, what was painful for Brain when watching it was that I had Malice here leading the charge, and Malice actually has the ability, let's just see if we can find it here. Um, I'm just looking for it. It was one that we saved up a lot of points for. Here it is, Thunderstorm. And so I, I actually never even used Thunderstorm. I completely forgot about it. I didn't even think about using it. And Brain pointed out that Thunderstorm is a really fantastic ability in particular for um, a sorcerer obviously as it's kind of a bread and butter ability but also as shadow elves it, it carries a lot of extra benefit so in particular you can see here thunderstorm it summons a mighty thunderstorm for three turns all units become drenched and gain 40 percent fire resistance 20 percent frost weakness and 20 percent shock weakness they also this also um uh, has the chance every turn between one and three lightning bolts will strike enemy units for 12 shock damage. So the only caveat there is that it requires three action points. So if I do that, I can't use Malice to do anything else. But Brain pointed out that I could have used this at the beginning of battle, and that would have increased my odds of actually landing a stun with my other units, which is absolutely correct because the stun here, if I have inflict stun, that you can see here is actually a shock check meaning that if they're more weak to shock, they have a higher chance of being stunned. So that would be great. And then also, a lot of my units do shock damage of some kind, as they are Shadow Elves. And so, it would actually allow me to do more damage and have a greater chance to shock. And the, the ability is doing damage anyway. So, uh, great comment from Brain there. I absolutely, totally kind of had a brain fart there. And, you know, I spent all this time saving up points to get it. It's kind of a shame not to use it. Um, I can't remember in the battle if Thunderstorm is actually in my list of um, abilities that you can see. That can actually kind of trick you. If you can't see it, if it's like down on the list somewhere that you don't see it, you'll forget that it's there. Now, I don't remember if that was the case, but um, we'll, we'll see if we get Malice into a battle if that's the case. Brain also pointed out that it would be beneficial for me to try to unlock the Chaos Rift spell, which is another one of those every turn you summon a unit. And that's a very, very powerful ability. And I totally agree with him. I think if I could get that, at, at that point it would be almost impossible for the enemy to really put up with anything I can throw at them. So uh, thank you to Brain for all of those great comments. The next comment comes from Samuel Gomes. And Samuel pointed out that I'm really at my mana cap basically every turn. And that I'm, I'm not really in any danger of kind of running out of mana anytime soon. So he suggested using more mana each turn. So whether that's casting spells with my various heroes, not not Malice necessarily, but with my other heroes, or using ma mana to maybe build more items or anything like that, uh, it would make sense since I'm pretty much floating at my capacity here at all times. So uh, great comment from Samuel there. I totally agree. I think it's worth, if I have all this extra mana, I may as well use it. The other thing that Samuel pointed out is that at this point, I've got some very, very powerful units uh, that I'm summoning here with Eldritch Horrors, but also other units that I've been able to acquire, like, for example, with my Necromancer. We'll just jump back down to Vraxen here, wherever he is. There he is. He's got an incredibly powerful stack here of Tier 4, uh, Fallen Angel, and Sathonic Guardian. 
So I've got all these really quite powerful units, and I've got really good upgrades like stun for my support units. So Samuel pointed out that at this point, if I can get all those units to the front line, it's going to be very, very difficult for the enemy to really be able to, to stop me. And I totally agree. I think I've got a really good opportunity here to kind of um, wrap this game up in, in the next couple episodes, assuming I play my cards right. Uh, and then the final set of comments comes from Casper Eklund. And Casper had a number of things to point out here. Um, he said one thing was to remember to clear out watchtowers. And I, I did a really poor job of that, actually. I had some opportunities there to clear out watchtowers, and I didn't do it. Uh, like, here's a good example. I could have cleared this one out, and I didn't. Um, this guy, here's another one, although less less of an issue as it's more in my domain, but still. And there's, there's a few others that I've kind of, this one here, I've walked past them and just left them kind of um, unconquered and, and unmolested, which is not a great idea because if you take out the units, you then get all that extra vision range, and that'll help me see if there's, you know, roaming units in my area or if there's enemies, you know, trying to flank me or anything like that. It's just generally a good idea to have more vision range if possible, and watchtowers are an easy way to do that. So I totally agree with Casper there. I, I've kind of, uh, I've been neglecting that, and that's something I shouldn't be doing. I should definitely clear those if I get the chance. Um, Casper also pointed out that I had mentioned Terraformer, the spell, last episode. And Terraformer, Casper basically said once you start casting it, it, it doesn't eat up your casting points, it just costs you mana. And so that would actually be great. I can start using that to improve my happiness, improve my income, and also if there's any cities where I've got terrain issues where units take forever to get out of, their, out of the territory, I can use that to accomplish that feat. And kind of on that same note, Casper pointed out that it may not be worth just continuing to summon Eldritch Horrors over and over again. Um, Casper pointed out that against Dreadnoughts, uh, Eldritch Horrors may not actually be the best unit to face them. That there may be other, other better choices. And also, if I want, uh, I should probably cast some other spells like Terraformer and a few other things. So it may not be worth just continuing to always summon the Eldritch Horror. And I, I once again agree with Casper there. Um... One other thing that Casper pointed out here, if we jump back down to this city, Casper pointed out that this, I haven't cleared out this structure, I don't think. And uh, this is a Heart of the Glades, and I'm going to have to make sure that I've cleared this out before I, uh, by, before I leave this, this area with my uh, Theocrat hero. And that's because as this city grows, I'm eventually going to want this in my domain. So, um, again, great suggestions from Casper there. Um, awesome, awesome suggestions from everybody this past episode, guys. Really, really great. Um, these are making a big difference for me, so keep them coming, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's dive in, and we will start by actually doing what Casper suggested here, and let's just jump over and see kind of what we're looking at. So, yeah, there are some units there that we need to clear out. Um, we could clear them out and then come back for the Ziggurat, and I think maybe that's what we'll do. So we're going to bring our unit over and engage the battle. We'll do this one. Should be relatively straightforward here. Essentially, we are just going to do kind of our standard buff our node serpent, send him in, move our knights up, and our griffin rider as well, move our monster hunter and our pikemen up. So I'm expecting some wing beats here potentially, but nope, looks like they're not going to do it. So instead, we're just going to charge in real aggressive. Remember that in this stack, we actually have Divine Justicars, so we don't have to worry too much about, um, really about taking a ton of damage here. I mean, obviously, we don't want to take, you know, frivolous damage, but... Alright, there we go. So I suspect our Griffin Rider is going to get attacked. He got attempted to get seduced there. That was actually a bit of a risk that I didn't necessarily need to take. So we'll go in and drop a heal on our Griffin Rider. And I think what we'll do here is we'll come in like this. And we'll turn the Nymph around. There we go. Actually, what I maybe should have done... Oh, I can use the Node Serpent. We'll kill off the Toadstool Fairy here if we can. Not quite. And then we will use our Sprint ability. Jump in behind here. And we'll kill off the Nymph. And then we can kill off the Zephyr Bird with our Night Guard here. We're just going to move over. 
And now this little fairy is going to probably kill itself on our knight. Yep, perfect. No worries there. All right, so that structure is now cleared out. So if we need to, uh, or excuse me, when the city grows, we can hopefully get that in our domain. So now we'll move over to the ziggurat. We won't be able to get there this turn, but that'll give us a chance to just heal up a little bit. And then we can check out how strong the ziggurat is and see if it's worth trying to uh, take it over and get the benefit there. And then as we move this way, we'll clear out the quarry and we'll also take out this necromantic circle. All of that using our stack here with our Theocrat hero. So now let's jump back up top. So we've already moved Malice and, and that kind of group there. But we do have some work we can do with Thanis here. So we've got these units that used to belong to Thanis that are now kind of in our domain. I don't think they're posing a threat to us. Like I don't think they, yeah, they don't count as anything bad. So I might actually wait and just leave them there and come over with a unit that can convert them and maybe try and snag one of these mounted archers because uh, they're actually pretty decent. So I think that's what we'll do. And we got another one here. So that's going to be the plan there, I think. So maybe we'll just keep Thanis just chilling um, in his old throne city here just for now. Okay, and we've got this kind of undead stack here, led by this ghoul watcher. Uh, so here's an opportunity where we could go clear out this watchtower. We could also clear out this traveling circus, which I think maybe we will do. So let's take care of that. Okay, so obviously we need to be careful of the Unicorn Rider's phase ability, but other than that, we should be in pretty good shape here to kind of just put some work in. So let's try for a Petrify. Okay, we didn't get it. Send our Cadaver right up there. And I'm going to group up my units a little bit around the Brew Brother. I'm going to send him back just because I don't want him getting phased on real bad. Okay. So I'm expecting the Watcher's probably going to take some... Oh, there goes this. They went for my Archers. That's okay. Unfortunately, they can they can survive that and tank the damage a bit. So what we'll do is we'll send our Cadaver over here to take on the Initiate. And then I think what we'll do is we'll actually send our Pikemen over, our Temple Guard, and do some damage to the Unicorn Riders there. We'll take a step back, blast the heck out of them, which is always good. And then we will move ourselves over with our crushers. Meanwhile, our watcher can finish off the infantry there, which is excellent. And you know what? We will drop a nourishing meal on our archers. That does it for our turn. So our cadavers went down. No problem there. Um... So let's move over here. We can kill off the Initiate. No problem there. And then we can light up the Union Guard and get the finish. No problem at all. Nice and clean battle. And because that's a Cadaver with Resurgence, we don't have to worry too much. So that takes care of that. Let's take a peek in here and see if there's anything worth grabbing. We do have quite a bit of gold. I suppose we could grab a Draconian Flyer if necessary, but I don't really think that's going to be of much benefit for us. We've really got... All these strong units. I don't think we really necessarily need that. Um, I was going to head up this way. I suppose, again, this maybe maybe was an opportunity where I should have cleared out the watchtower rather than head over here first. However, yeah, that would take us another turn to kind of backtrack and get back over there. So I think instead maybe we'll just head up this way. I'm just trying to decide there. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Again, I, I probably should clear that watchtower out, but kind of want to just get into the fight here more um okay now let's jump over speaking of our unit over here so we've already moved the rogue and the elder chore that's accompanying the rogue so we're not going to worry about that um we've got a few other units here that have to move so we've got our our undead stack here and that actually reminds me if we jump back to the shadow realm we do have this shadow demon who's coming to join that stack we're going to send him through the shadow gate to, to buddy up with them so that'll be good. And we have this Eldritch Horror and uh, some miscellaneous Shadow Elf units heading up to 
reclaim this city which was taken from us by some elemental units. So let's go back to the surface here. All right, so now the question is, what do we do with this stack in the meantime? Um, obviously, we want to group them up. So maybe we'll, we'll send them over here, and we'll just wait. They don't have any more movement, so we'll just hang out next to that inn with these dwarves there, and maybe that's who we'll attack once we have the opportunity. Uh, let's go back and see. I can't remember if we've moved Vraxen or not. Yes, we have. Okay. And we're going to use Vraxen here and his stack to clear out some of these structures that are in our territory. Make sure we're getting full benefit out of them. Okay, now let's see. Who else do we have to move? Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Yeah, so we've, we've moved pretty much everybody. I'm going to pick my research now, and then we'll see if there's anyone left to move. All right, so we've got some upgrades here. Healing Essence. Let's check this. Let's check this out. If there are corpses on the battlefield, then they will be destroyed, and all friendly units will instantly be healed for 10 health and gain 100 morale so that's kind of a cool ability it's a combat spell for gray guard basically um turns the the dead bodies into health for my units that's pretty cool we've got purging burst all fey summon to undead and creatures of magical origin have to resist a spirit check of 10 or be dealt 10 uh, fire and 10 spirit damage otherwise they get five and five of each we have lightning storm here um so this deals damage to target enemy army or kills a bunch of people in a target city. Uh, invoke Extraordinary Mount. At this point, that's starting to get kind of less useful because by the time we summon the egg and then the 10 turns goes by, we're probably going to be in a position where we don't really need that anymore. I think what I'll do is I'll do Greater Disjunction just on the off chance that someone throws something at us uh, that we want to get rid of. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend our, our next two turns on that one. Um, all right, so now we have to do production. So let's kind of figure that out. For Telvenda, our throne. Now we can do this Celestial Tower, which will increase the range of the city. And that would actually bring this Beacon of Light, which is actually unexplored, and this Glass Furnace in. So we're going to do that. We'll do the Celestial Tower. All right, now over to uh, Sakura here. We're going to keep working towards... I think we're going to keep working in this city towards a... A palace so we'll do the siege workshop that's pretty efficient do it in two turns asper sen here we were using this city to produce draconian apprentice units however we can also produce flyers here because we we got a an upgrade that let us do that let's do the observatory though and get the extra knowledge income i think that will be good it's also going to increase the domain of that city a little bit which is a good thing now, we want this city to grow its domain, that's for sure, because we want to eventually get this Forgotten Throne uh, in the domain of this city. So I think what we'll do, um, we would eventually like to get a stone wall, but let's do the Siege Workshop first, I think. Not the most efficient build, as we're, we're only at 65 income, and we're going to grow in two turns. So actually, let's do a storehouse instead. Or, you know, we could, I guess we could do the wall, and then we can get this, yeah, let's do the wall, then we'll get the stone wall next, uh, after that. But we'll maybe do the siege workshop once this is complete, and by then hopefully we'll get a production boost due to the size of the city increasing, and then we can maybe do this in two turns, so that'll be more efficient. Okay, up to our draconian city up top here. Um, still relatively small, kind of undeveloped. Um, let's do a laboratory use up some more mana, get some more knowledge income. Over to this draconian city of Dumkin, which used to be, if I remember right, a dwarven city. Uh, I suppose we could do a shrine, actually, because we are we might eventually want to get um, draconian elders out of this city, potentially, or apprentice units, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll do the shrine. And that's because we have that lost library there on that one. Okay, so over to our halfling city of Isfar here. And we want to be able to produce our brew brothers. So we're going to do the temple there just so that we're able to produce them. And now over to Hif. 
Hif has pretty much everything complete, so I think we're just going to tell Hif to do merchandise for now. All right, to Biraneth here, which is, importantly, kind of on our front lines. So if we wanted to maybe make some units, this might be a, a decent city to do that. Um, all we're missing, though, is a hospital, and then we could end up with a Grand Palace. I am kind of tempted to just do that. Um, but I think maybe we'll add another unit to just these stacks here. We've got this hero with nobody to lead, so a Dreadnought, Goblin Dreadnought hero. Why don't we add a High Elf Stormbow might be kind of nice, but we'll do a Storm Sister to have a chance to stun there. So we'll make a support unit to add into this stack here. All right, so this stack, we've already used our movement. This little guy was moving north, kind of up through this area here. So maybe we'll just head up the road. And this guy, I don't remember what my plan with him was, or if I even had one, to be honest. Um, let's see, are there any kind of more vulnerable cities that I might want to reinforce, maybe with another guard or just have a scout? I think I'll just send him up this way. We'll kind of figure out what to do with him as we go. Back over here, we do have a scout unit over here who is at the end of his movement, so he's done. We have this Wisp here, and the reason that Wisp is... Uh... Now, if I'm not mistaken, we were producing a Settler in this city, and I don't remember what happened to it. Did we maybe cancel that out? Something I don't, I don't remember why. Because we, we had this unit set to not... We had this unit set to not be camped because we wanted to remember we were going to be producing a settler. I must have switched off it. Maybe maybe that's what I did there when I switched over to this Celestial Tower or something. I wasn't paying attention. In any case, it's all right. We'll just, um, we'll just do that. So I'm not sure what happened there, but that's okay. And yeah, we have this hero. Zoom in and look at him a bit. Oh, did we do his level up? I don't remember. Um... Okay, yeah, so he, his level ups are already applied. All right, perfect. So that's our turn. We'll end it there. Actually, what I might do, I could summon this Elder Torer in to join Thanis here, and then we could move over and try and dominate this uh, Mounted Archer, which would be pretty cool. So going forward here, my, my goal is to, to basically get Malice and um, Tana, move these forces over to join up with Thanis here, and then we can kind of just press into Edward's terrain and try and, you know, overwhelm him with kind of a Blitzkrieg attack and have him hopefully surrender in the way that the other two opponents have. So unfortunately, we're going to lose our scout there. We'll just auto combat that away. I maybe could have tried kiting them there a bit, but not a big deal. We still haven't seen any of um, Phi Doral, who's probably further west, but I guess we'll we'll find out. We did get a level up here with Thanos, which is kind of cool. Um, oh, this might just be the the old casting point or the old the old upgrade points that we hadn't applied before. So we'll do range command, defense command, uh, melee command. Just kind of upgrade our units, basically. Yep, there we go. Pretty solid. We've had some items show up, which is a good thing. So we did have this Nightmare Mount show up for Virix, and I'm going to swap those out. Previously had the Hellhound, which we're just going to sell. So that's fantastic. We had a Coat arrive for Awalia, as well as, let's see what the other item was. Okay, and a Jewel there with Regeneration, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So we'll equip that as well. So, fantastic for her. Vampire spider eggs getting closer to hatching. Um, Alright, so... Oh, and we have a quest available here for this city underground. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to be heading down there, so I'm going to just kind of ignore that quest, I think. 
I don't think we're going to have much need to go underground in this game because our remaining opponents are, as far as I'm, I'm aware, above ground. So uh, Draconians, I suppose, could theoretically be underground, but I don't think they ever really spawn there. They're, they're usually on the surface or in the Shadow Realm, if I'm not mistaken. So I suppose if we have to go underground, we will. But for now, we're going to just stick to the surface and trying to eliminate as many of our opponents as we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to summon... Summon the Eldritch Horror right there. And then we're going to send our units in like this. And we will engage the battle. Like this. And then we're going to use our Eldritch Horror to try and dominate the Mounted Archer. Alright, so... Don't really want him in defense mode necessarily, as I think that increases the. Hang on now, dominate is a. Oh, it's actually a spirit check, so I, I don't think that's actually going to matter. Fifty-five percent chance. Let's try it. Okay, didn't work, but again, always worth giving it a try. So we'll just do some damage here. We'll kill off the longbowman like that, no problem at all. And we can move in and do some big damage here so we'll do that and then our griffin rider can charge in and hopefully get the kill yep no problem so yeah that because it's a spirit check uh, the unit being in defense mode i don't think has any real bearing on that so worth a try we can actually try one more time here with this stack so we'll do that again we will take our once again we'll take our mounted archer to, to do the battle and this time we're going to try for the Mounted Archer again. Hopefully the second time's the charm in this case. Alright, so we'll fly over there. He's out of range, unfortunately. We'll do a little bit of damage, though, because why not? And then let's light up this Nightmare. Do some big damage here. Hit it with a crossbow shot. And then blast it with our Griffin Rider. Good to go. Do a little bit of damage. I don't want to kill it. I just want it to be damaged a bit. And then we'll send our Griffin Rider up front. So we're going to take some archery damage here. Yeah, there it is. But we can use our Elder Horror to move in and try for the Dominate. And we got it. Fantastic. So we got ourselves another Mounted Archer. Quite happy with that. And... Now we're going to just send our unit down here to go find out just how strong our opponent is, basically. And we'll send our hero, our other go our goblin hero, uh, Goblin Dreadnought, in with our Storm Sister. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the Mounted Archer to that stack, and they can kind of reinforce uh, Thanos' little army there. And of course we have this stack moving in to help as well, so they'll be able to reinforce as well, which is a good thing. There we go. So yeah, we're just going to get all hands on deck, basically. Start moving everybody over kind of as quickly as we can. And I think we're actually going to kind of do a bit more water exploration here to try and get over there kind of more quickly with our rogue hero. We kind of want to get ourselves involved, if possible, in these battles, so... There we go. Yeah, we'll just hang out like that. That should be good here. I suppose what I could do, actually, if I go back there, I could use some of my units that are floating. So I could use the Obsidian Wyvern, I could use the Node Serpent, and I could use the Eldritch Horror to engage this battle with these Scoundrels. Maybe I'll do that real fast just to get it kind of over with. Oh, okay, and it actually brings everybody in. I wasn't sure if it would. All right, perfect. Well, we'll just do that real fast. Kind of get the battle done. Okay, so just some pesky scoundrels that need a killing. I suppose I could uh, try and dominate one of them just to try and have a scout. Just dwarf scoundrel, frostling scoundrel, draconian scoundrel. I think the dwarf is going to have... Actually, no, they're all going to be pretty similar, so we'll just try for a dominate on the Dwarf Scoundrel. Wow, even at 70%, still resisted. All right. 
All right, let's try for some stuns here if we can get them. No such luck. Go in for the charge and just get the massive kill there. And we'll try for a big stun there. Fantastic. And let's see if we move in here. We're going to hit our own knight or hit our own node serpent. So we'll just throw a ice ball there and finish him off that way. Then we'll move our wyvern in. And our brew brother. Now we have to remember this unit does have um, sprint. So it's probably going to sprint away. Yep, there it goes. All right, so we'll just heal up our hero real fast. Excellent. And we can actually try for a charm here. We got it. Fantastic. So now we can use that unit as a bit of a scout if we need to. We'll just group up again. Fantastic. Um, I might actually send the Wyvern out of the stack here and keep the Horror in the stack to get some of the benefit of being in the in Islara's stack, getting her upgrades, just making that unit a little bit better. Uh, we have an alliance proposal here. We can turn this city into our vassal, which I will certainly do. I think we're now basically neutral. Yeah, we are perfectly neutral. So that's good. Keeping track of our alignment as we should. We have a join offer from Ripya, but I'm not going to take them up on it once again because I don't have units in the area. Um, because I'm sending this stack further north, of course. So we'll just keep sending them up. Up that away. And let's see what else we've got going on. We've already figured out we don't really want to do that quest. So maybe let's do our Necromancer now. So we've got some structures to clear out. We'll start with this Beacon of Light. Oh yeah, okay, we've got a Dwarf Firstborn. That could be kind of fun to try and uh, ghoul curse if possible. Quite a powerful unit. Important to note here, we have Blessing of Health affecting the enemy, so they're going to be a little bit tankier than normal. Alright, so we can be pretty aggressive here because, again, we don't have to worry as much about our units dying as we're able to revive them if they do happen to go down. Although our Deathbringer is kind of in rough shape, so maybe we will keep him back just to drop a quick little heal on him. And one thing we could, I suppose, do is fly in a bit with our Fallen Angel, and we'll actually try for a Petrify here. We only got one of them, and it was on the Crossbowman there. That's all right. Let's try and lock down the uh, Draconian there. All right, and we've got our Sithonic Guardian here, who... I think we'll also kind of lock some units down. We'll lock down the Flamer and the Crossbowman over there. All right, we'll end our turn there. Okay, that went pretty well. So now what we're going to do is we're not worried about damaging the Firstborn so much as we want to just try and despair and curse the unit. We got some stun. We got a despair. That's quite good. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing with Vrax in here. Oh yeah, we got some big despairs there. That's fantastic. Now we're going to jump in behind. 95% chance to ghoul curse. We got it. No problem there. Very, very nice. That unit is now also stunned, so we don't have to worry too much about them. We can kill the Flamer. Do some damage to the Crossbowman. Um... Might actually be worth just killing off the crossbowman here. There we go. And the reason I say that is because this unit is stunned, so they're they're posing no real threat right now. We'll kill off the flamer, and that's our turn. Okay. And now we can maybe, if anybody needs some healing, we can do that. So let's use our guardian. Actually, let's use our. Um, Let's use Vrax in here to just soften him up a bit more. There we go. And then we can move in and get the kill with our Guardian. Now we can move our Reanimator in and heal up our Deathbringer some more. Great. And then we can do some big damage with our Fallen Angel and get the kill. Excellent. Very, very clean. And we got ourselves a Ghoul Dwarf Firstborn. We could take human cavalry and some gold. Um, 
I don't think I really need the cavalry in this area, so I'm going to just sell that for some extra income. All right. Ooh, and we can actually move over here to this Forgotten Throne. Now, I suspect this is going to be quite difficult, but we've got ourselves a pretty solid stack. Oh, and you know what? This actually bodes pretty well because our units are undead, which means they're resistant to frost damage a little bit. And we've got two frost dragons and two shadow elf infused. I'm, I'm liking those odds, so I'm going to do this battle. And of course, I forgot about this. There's Willbreaker Horde. Every uh, turn, one Willbreaker is summoned on a random position on the battlefield. So we got to try and end this battle quickly because these little units are pretty nasty. Um, they do pretty big damage. They have Fairy Fire. They have Chaos. Taunt enemy unit attempts to convert it. They can phase. They're actually pretty nasty units. So yeah, I, I maybe should have paid a little more attention to that. But... That's okay. We're just going to try our best to basically get this battle over with kind of as quickly as possible here. Send our units in and just start attacking. Um, again, if our units go down, we can revive them, so I am not that concerned at the moment. We'll attack the Frost Dragon here with our Guardian. And... I want to remember that if those units are doing anything crazy... The good thing is our units are undead, so they're not going to really be... I don't think you can convert them, which is fantastic. Um, however, with that phase, they could jump in and attack my um, my Necromancer. Good news, though, is that he's got Undying, so I'm less concerned about that outcome. We're actually going to move up like this, jump in, and see if we can kill off the Infused. We can. We actually got the Ghoul Curse, which not particularly necessary at that point, but still useful. We'll keep Braxen kind of back. Maybe we'll even cast a spell with him. Um, let's see what Desecration does. All Devout units suffer minus three resistance, but all undead get plus three resistance. Not the worst thing ever. That would kind of give us some extra elemental resistance. Um, yeah, what the heck. Let's do it. Not really going to be hugely beneficial for us, but it'll help a little bit. I should have turned him, though, to, before I cast that, but it's okay. Oh. Okay, so they turned my undead. That's not good. Fortunately, it has undying, so again, not too concerned. But um, so my and remember, my fallen angel, uh, yeah, like I said, has undying, so not that worried. We're gonna light up this frost dragon here. There we go. Actually, got the stun on it. I think there, which is fantastic. Um, and now with our deathbringer here, we can. Yeah, we can finish off this Frost Dragon, which I think we're going to do. And then with our Bone Collector here, we can fight the other one pretty pretty good. There we go. Bone Collector's kind of in rough shape, but I think we'll be all right. Um, with these infused here, I think what we'll do is we will hit them with some damage. Got a Despair at least, and then we'll move in and attack them with our Sathonic Guardian. And that's our turn. Ooh, can, oh, wow, so they were able to convert even though it... Boy, that's scary. Okay, well, we'll kill off the Will Breaker, which did it. And that should clear it up. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, those things are terrifying. We don't want to deal with them. Do not like that. Um, we'll flank the Frost Dragon here. Yeah, and then we'll finish it off. Perfect. And we can get a little bit of our health back, charge over and finish off that Will Breaker, or at least get it really, really damaged. I thought we could get the kill, but not quite. Um, so what does this unit have? Taunted. So what does that do? Let's check. Unit doesn't obey orders. Instead, it attempts to attack the nearest enemy unit with its melee attack. Okay, well, that's just fine. Not really a big deal. We'll, we'll fly over with Rax in here and kill off the Will Breaker. The nice thing about killing these Will Breakers is we're getting casting points back, which is kind of cool. There goes our Guardian, just acting on his own. <clears throat> so yeah, you can almost use these to farm casting points back, which is kind of a, a cheeky little strategy. You know, that's actually not the worst plan ever. Um, let's use our Bone Collector here to pick up some more corpses. 
There we go. We got most of our health back. And we can drop a big heal on our Deathbringers. We can also drop a heal on our Fallen Angel. So I'm going to use my Fallen Angel, fly over like this. Try for a Petrify. It didn't work. Again, I'm going to kind of let a few more of these, these appear just so I can, I think, farm a few more casting points back because that is pretty, pretty sneaky little strategy. There we go. That's five more. You can see there we're just collecting them back. So I'm in no rush. I can, uh, I can sit here and, and do that for a bit. This is also, I suppose, a way you could farm experience. Okay, that takes care of this one. There we go, five more. I think we will end this here pretty quick, though, because... And their corpses, the Willbreaker corpses actually count as consumable bodies, which is pretty cool. So that makes, that makes my life a little bit easier with my Bone Collector. Okay, and Vraxen will just kind of move up like this. This is kind of an annoying spell if you want the battle to be over, though, because they can summon kind of anywhere. So, definitely not a super enjoyable ability if you're really having problems with it. And then we'll move in there and get that one. Collect some more bones. You almost have to spread your units out so that wherever they spawn, you have someone that can kill it. And, yeah, there's another one. Okay. Fortunately, they're moving in towards us, so... Yeah, we can fly over like... Or move over like this and light that one up a bit. And then we should be able to at least do quite a bit of damage here. There we go. Should have used my defensive strike there. That might have been a smarter move. And, I mean, again, again, the good news here is we're just getting a ton of casting points back thanks to our, our Grey Guard upgrades. This is a little bit, uh, a little bit cheeky, actually. I'm kind of... <laughs> I don't feel bad about it at all, mind you, but it is kind of a little little bit of a it's tricky strategy. Most of these, a lot of these abilities, they only do this as long as there are no summoned units on the battlefield. As soon as you run out of combat summons, the unit uh, ability runs out. But in this case, it actually just keeps going, which I find really interesting. Okay, that one will decay. They take 7 damage due to being unstable life forms, so there's that one. Alright, I think we're clear. Oh, there's that one. Okay, so that should be the last one now. So, sorry guys, this battle kind of dragged on, but look at that. I was able to recover almost all of my casting points, so... We'll move Vraxen in and we'll finish off that one. So there we go. We got a ton of casting points back, which is excellent for us. All right, Big Beetle Egg, Recharging Mana Currents, and some gold. So what does Recharging Mana Currents do for us? The Mana Currents fuse themselves with supernatural beings, replenishing those creatures' um, hit points. Restore 15 health to a friendly summoned unit or unit of magical origin each combat round. I'm going to take that because I've got so many summoned units that that's actually decently useful for me. Um, this big beetle egg probably not going to be a, a factor, so I think we'll just sell that off. By the time it hatches, I, su I suspect we're going to have this battle very close to, or this game very close to finished, but who knows, maybe I'm being overconfident. Okay. So that takes care of Raxon. Um, the next thing I'm probably going to send him down is to clear out this beacon of light. And we've, we also grabbed that infused, so we, we're building ourselves up a little bit of a stack, which is kind of cool. I do need this unit, though, to go and join up with someone who can heal. So that could actually go nicely with my Halfling City, potentially. Um, however, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just send him out here, kind of where I'm sending all the other units. Okay, Dumpkin. Uh... I guess we'll wait to do our production. We've still got a lot of movement we can do, if I'm not mistaken. So let's jump around and see what else we can move. Right, so our builder. So we now have the Heart of the Shadows in our domain. We're getting the casting points from it. And we're also getting the uh, 
mana and no mostly the knowledge income here from this wizard tower ruin, so that's pretty fantastic. So now we got to decide where else our builder could maybe add some value. Um, again, we could go for this Forbidden Sanctum and get the mana income, but again, we're doing really good for mana, so I'm going to have to think about this one again, where best to, to go with him. Uh, we got a Raven's Keep over here that I don't think we ever actually cleared out. You know, we got another Heart of the Shadows up here. Maybe we'll head up that way. I mean, if this builder ends up getting killed by roaming units, whatever. Not the end of the world. We can clear that Heart of the uh, Shadows out with our Eldritch Horror stack that's moving up that way. Okay, there comes our Harvester. We'll just group them up. So now that stack is pretty powerful. Um, let's think about casting some spells here. Um, so we could do some, let's see, let's think about what we would do. Um, I guess I never actually did research terraforming, so I would have to actually finish researching it. I'm actually now able to summon this Eldritch Horror in just a single turn, which is pretty incredible. I could summon a Node Serpent and a Phantasm or a Phantasm Warrior here if I'm so inclined. Um, you know what? I think I'm just going to go for Broke here on the Elder Chor. I'm going to summon one more of them because it's just one more turn, so that's pretty awesome. I know Casper had suggested it might not be worth just summoning a bunch of Elder Chorers, but I think I'm going to add one more maybe to this hero stack. And that way, every almost every stack has at least one unit that can um, add units to the stack using Dominate. So that's my rationale there, is I want to have one more for this stack, and then maybe I'll do something else with my, my casting. Um, okay, here we go. We have Awalia, and I don't remember exactly what we were planning to do with her. We had cleared out, there was a Boneyard here that needed to be cleansed. Um, I think maybe we'll take the Longbowman out of this stack. And I'll have to figure out where best to... Oh, excuse me. I had to sneeze there. Um, I'll have to figure out where, where we want to send this unit. And the reason is I want to add this apprentice into the stack instead. So we could even use him as a scout. I mean, I, I hate to use the Longbowman as a scout because he's a pretty powerful unit for a tier one. But I think maybe that's what we'll do. There's actually a city to the north there, so I suppose we could even head up there. Clear out this watchtower, maybe. But I think maybe we'll head back this way. We want to clear out this beast den, and we can grab this on our way. So that's what we'll do with Oelia. And then we can head north and go check out that city. Um, okay, our rogue is now able to move again. No, she's not, so that's still... Let's see. Uh, let's go back and kind of jump through our units one more time here. Oh, uh, let's jump back here. We have this cadaver who can still move, so we'll, we're will we using him as kind of just a glorified scout at this point. Um, we can actually do some scouting into Edward's area, which will be helpful for us. This was probably a city that belonged to Thanos, I'm guessing. Okay, let's do our production. And then we can... Oh, actually, we still have Virix to move our, um, our Theocrat hero here. Yeah, all right. We were going to check out this Ziggurat. Let's check it out. Okay. So we've got two Gluttons, which, you know, a little scary, but they do have low defense. So they are susceptible to just kind of pounding on them with physical damage. Uh, and then a couple of Baby Reed Serpents. I think since we have Divine Justicars, I think we'll be able to manage this battle. I mean, it is a bit of a risk because they could just swallow us whole. But uh, let's give it a shot here. All right, so we're going we're gonna to buff our units here. Let's just make sure. Do we have any cool spells here that would come in handy? Not particularly. I think what we'll do is we will use our classic Touch of Faith. And let's see who's got the... Yeah, I think we'll, we'll throw Touch of Faith on our Node Serpent. And we'll move our Node Serpent up just a touch. Our Knight will be ready to go. Our Griffin Rider. Our Monster Hunter is actually going to come in handy here, I think. 
Especially with that net throw, we could try and ensnare one of them potentially. Um, we'll use Bestow Iron Heart on our Griffin Rider. There we go. So now our units are pretty tough up front there. Get our Pikeman involved. And our Monster Hunter, move him up as well. Of course, I forgot about the Gas Breath, so I shouldn't have grouped up like that. That was a mistake. I completely forgot about that. So that was not a wise decision on my part, but I think we'll be all right. We're just going to have to work around that now. Um, ooh, yeah, big damage here. We'll move our Knight in. Let's just, let's just prioritize getting rid of these Gluttons, if at all possible, here. Really want them out of the picture. And uh, Virix, oh my god, I, I wasn't paying attention. Virix took a beating there. She's almost dead. So I'm actually going to retreat with her because if she goes down, this whole thing is is, is doomed here. So Because then I lose my Divine Justicars. So yeah, boy, that was scary. That would have been devastating. Um, big mistake there. So I, I wasn't paying attention to the... I didn't remember that the Glutton has Gas Breath. I remembered it kind of as it was about to hit me. All right, so we can finish off this glutton. There we go. Fantastic. And then uh, let's try and ensnare this one in the net. Okay, we failed, but at least we took out some of its movement. And then we'll go attack these reed serpents over here. There we go. Oof. Oh, and he swallowed whole our little monster hunter unit. Too bad. Kill off that one. And we can build up a charge here and hit the glutton in the back. There we go. Nice big attack. Nice damage there. And actually, because we were able to kill him, we were able to get our monster hunter back, which is great. Doesn't Not really able to move, but he can use his crossbow shot, which does pretty good damage. Um, our node serpent is now able to move, so I think we will... Let's throw a sprint on, and then we can finish off these ones here. Perfect. Virix is now in decent shape. I was going to actually maybe think about trying to convert one of those units, but um, I can't remember if the Gluttons even had mind control immunity, so let's see. Can we get the freeze? Nice. Boy, that was a scary battle, though, that I almost lost Virix. Again, I got a little overconfident there, and I grouped up when I shouldn't have, but all in all, it's, it's going to be all right because we've got... I'm um, just trying to get some more experience there. We'll level up our knight if possible. Get him some more experience. Yeah, boy, that was that was super sloppy on my part. I should not have grouped up like that. But we made it through. Thanks to uh, a bit of luck, kind of. Um, ooh, uh, we got a decent shield here. Abs uh, Quamet's Absorber of Potential Grief. Legendary shield that gives 20% physical protection and 40% blight protection. And then we've got Accursed Armor of the Tower Ruin. Plus two health, or excuse me, plus two defense, plus one resistance, animal slayer, face slayer, slowed, and regrowth. Slowed means this unit's movement radius is halved, and it cannot retaliate or you use attacks of opportunity until the end of combat. That's the, that's the negative. Everything else about it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's a bit of a shame because I, I really don't like slowed. I think that limiting your hero's uh, movement is, is pretty dangerous. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to sell this one off. I really don't don't need it. I mean, it is very powerful, but I think I'm just going to sell it. That being... Uh, you know what? That being said, I don't really want Virix getting up in the battle. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's give it to her. It's just going to give her so much more defense, and, um, and she has regrowth now, so... All right, so now we'll send off the shield to maybe one of our new heroes like Thanos, who I don't think really has any gear. Yeah, we'll send those to, to Thanos. Let's double check. I should have maybe checked before I sent it. Um, so he does have a shield, but I mean, the one I'm sending him is way better. And we'll, we'll equip that armor before it gets there, and we'll equip the headgear too. So that's great. He'll have a really powerful weapon. Or excuse me, a really powerful shield, I should say. All right. Um, hmm. So things are going pretty well now. I, I mean, again, I, you know, all blunders aside, we're, we're doing pretty good. So now let's see. What else can we do with Virix? Obviously, our units are a little worse for wear, but 
I think now we can head over this way. We'll clear this out, clear out the necromantic circle, and then progress, continue to the west. And maybe we'll start finding that uh, draconian um, theocrats domain. All right, let's do our production real quick. So we've got a, a ton of gold. We've got almost 1,500 gold here. So we can really start banging out some production. Let's just do laboratory, get more knowledge income. Okay, so Manthros, we are now able to start producing those really powerful Union Guard. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, it's it's a little bit less um, exciting because we've got such powerful units otherwise, but that is pretty sweet. Now, how much do they cost to make? Okay, we can start making them in one turn, so we'll we'll produce a few. Um, again, these, these have uh, Enchanted Armor, and they have uh, Pillar of the Stylites, which gives the uh, projectile resistance and extra spirit damage in their melee attacks. So they are quite powerful for tier 1 units. And I mean their upkeep is relatively cheap. So I suppose it's not so bad just creating a bunch of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start assembling them kind of as a little stack here. I'll make a few of them and then work from there. Alright, back to Birneth here. This is the thro former throne of Thanis. We will do the hospital now. Let's get that going. Jump over to Hif. Uh, we'll we'll leave Hif for now. Let's uh, let's check out our other cities. We'll come back to it. Uh, Isfar. Here we go. So we now are working on the temple. So we'll leave that. Um, Birneth. We're doing that. Valp. We are still absorbing. Dunmanthros. Dunkin. Ambridor. We're still working on the laboratory. Shiron. We're doing that. Just going to jump around and make sure we've done most of our cities here. Looks like everything's producing something except for Hif. So let's see. If we wanted to make something in Hif, what would it be? We could make some Blight Doctors, which then again can try and stun. Um, butchers are also nice because they have um, life steal. However, we can also make Big Beetles, which is pretty sweet. The Tier 3 unit, that's always a good thing. We could also just make an item forge because why not? We've got loads of income. We could also make a sorcerer's conflux to get us goblin apprentice units if necessary. I think I'm going to do that just because I may want uh, the ability to heal my summoned units uh, that are in there. And it, may, it might be nice to have that those units with men magical being if, if necessary. So I'll just move them up just a touch. Okay, and we got our little undead stack here. We're going to avoid this. We don't need a calamity befalling the land just just yet. Um, so we'll jump over here and just clear this out. And we'll get some evil points here. Because we're probably going to vassal some more cities before all is said and done. They love to throw those chickens. <clears throat> My little unit almost died, so that's actually not good. Our pikemen... So we will drop a heal there. It's the only thing that kind of sucks when you have a stack being maintained by just kind of a single unit. We'll try for a Petrify there, and we didn't get it. And we'll we'll put our Crusher up front like that. And, yeah, I don't want to step in any further with our Archers, so we'll, we'll come back like this. We'll do a little bit of damage there. And we actually got the kill, which is fantastic. Send our cadaver up. Alright, perfect. Alright, so the boars went after the crushers, which is kind of what I expected. And so now we can try for a... We got a petrify, which is excellent. Makes our life a little bit easier. We'll do some damage there and get the kill, no problem at all. And then we can actually go and consume some corpses for some extra health, which is good. And then we can move our temple guard in, or we can just attack. I think we'll I think we'll use our our uh, crusher because they have a little bit higher chance to do some more damage. There we go, got the kill. Excellent. So we're clearing out structures there. I suppose we could actually take this warg and then send him up here as a scout. Oh, and there we go. We found a hostile enemy city. So we'll leave the warg here right on the edge of the city. And our, you know what, um, this actually might be a good opportunity. We can send the fairy down to join this little stack now that I think about it. Then we'll have a ranged unit to join in with the pikemen there. 
And this little cadaver, we've already used him up. And this guy, again, we can actually take advantage of kind of these stacks. We'll just we'll just make a little hodgepodge stack with these extra units. All right, we're going to group up there. And we'll actually head up north there with this stack. Um, yeah, we'll tell that unit to chill and guard the city. All right, perfect. So that does it for our turn. So we will end our turn there. So as soon as it's our turn, I'm going to summon this Eldritch Horror in with my, my new Goblin hero here, my Goblin Dreadnought, just so that he has a, a unit in his stack that he can use to dominate and grow his, grow his army as well. And then we're going to group up all these kind of disparate units into this stack as well. And then we're moving in our other units there. We are going to be exceptionally powerful. So things are not going to be looking very good for our friend or I guess I should say our opponent, Edward Portsmouth. Okay, lots of things happened here. So, we had some items arrive. We had a lot of things going on. So we're going to group up first of all, first and foremost. Let's get that done. There we go. Moving our heroes up the road. And I'm going to add my Eldritch Horror to this stack. And then we're going to move in. Okay, so we do have Dreadnoughts. <clears throat> so that, to be expected, of course, but we do have Dreadnoughts in the game here from Edward, so we're going to have to be careful with those. Oh, we had some items arrive here. We had a bow. and Oh, and the headgear has arrived for uh, Thanos, so that's great. He's now got a lot of defense. We had a level up here from Vraxen. Good thing for him. Um, this might be the time where we start loading up casting points to try to get Scourge of Undead. Alternatively, we could also give him some more little upgrades. Invoke Death is kind of a decent one, but I think we're just going to go with casting points for now at this point. It's kind of uh, supremely powerful, really. So we'll head down here. We can clear that out and we can kind of make a little stack with our ghouls here if, uh, as we as we go we were sending this unit down over here so we'll continue to do that now with this stack yeah we're gonna maybe have to do the same kind of thing where does this gate go up there okay maybe we'll send them that way again the only issue with those ghouls is just their inability to heal themselves so you know, if we if we left our Deathbringer behind, we could actually do this battle. So maybe, maybe we'll do that. Let's just at least take a peek at what we're at, what we're up against. So decently powerful units, but we've got blessing of health or blessing of health on them as well to make them a bit more powerful. But I think we can just clear this out. I don't think we'll have any trouble even without our Deathbringer. Boy, this, um, this unit composition gives me kind of a flashback to one of the very first episodes in this in this playthrough series where I was up against a unit, uh, unit stack very similar to this, and uh, I just narrowly was able to kind of win the battle without getting hammered too hard and losing a bunch of units early. Um, yeah, that was kind of a, <laughs> a little bit spicy. So we'll try for some petrifies there. Looks like we got two. That's good. Send our Bone Collector in there. Panic that unit. That's quite nice. And you know what? We can actually fly in like this. Drop an attack there. I'm not really concerned about Ghoul cursing anybody in this battle. I'm just trying to kind of do some damage here. Get get Just get through the battle. Kill everybody off, basically. Oh, throwing the chicken at Vraxen, of course. 
going after my uh, fallen angel and just getting life stealed, life steal canceled out there as you saw. Light up the shock trooper, did get some pretty good damage on him there, and we actually, you know what, I will try for a ghoul curse because why not? 95% opportunity there, so yeah, perfect. Another tier three unit, why not? Um, let's kill off the halberder there, perfect. And I mean, if Raxon goes down, it doesn't matter. He's got undying, or uh, undying, so it's not a problem. Uh, we'll move in here and turn them around. Get the kill there, no problem at all. Alright, that's our turn. So now I'm expecting our hero to get piked here really hard. Yeah, oh, we, looks like we got a ghoul curse on the farmer as well. Not that we really needed it, but... Um, and of course, I, I was about to use heal undead on himself, but I realized, yeah, he can't actually heal uh, himself because he's not undead. I'm so used to playing as a necromancer where my my heroes are undead after I get um, the Arc Lich upgrade. There we go. All right, that deals with that. And then we can finish off these little guys here. Fantastic. And... We basically just finish off this battle by finishing off these halberders up here. There we go. Quite nice. So that takes care of that. And we actually ghoul cursed a couple of units as a bonus. We're going to get a priest here. I will actually take that reward because priests are actually able to heal and maintain a stack. Unfortunately, though, Bestow Iron Heart doesn't heal undead. So, but I will still take the reward because it is nice to have a unit that can heal a stack. And you know what? Might take him a while to get there, but I'm going to send him up north. There we go. Okay. And so yeah, that should take care of that. And our Deathbringer can rejoin that stack here once we're next turn. So we've got a proposal here from uh, Parados, which is a Frostling city. They want to make peace, so we will do that. It would actually be nice to eventually get them as a vassal. Um, we have an alliance proposal here from Insham. We will make them our vassal. So as I was expecting, we're going to start gaining good points from making peace and vassaling cities. So uh, We have another joint offer from Ripya, which we're going to decline. And let's just see if there's anything else crazy that's happened here. We did have Valp join our empire, which is good. Um... Yeah, we'll figure out what to do with that maybe next episode here. I'm just going to make sure there's nothing else too insane that happened. Uh, let's just see. We have enough research here to do a lot of things in basically one turn. Uh, we could cleanse the source. I think what we'll do, though, is we'll do, a, we'll do Terraformer next. But we'll wait until the turn is over before we pick our research. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, yeah, we're, we're a little over time here, so... We'll, we'll leave the thrilling conclusion of kind of this conflict here with, with Edward for the next episode. But let's zoom out and take a peek here. So we're really spreading out over the surface. So all in all, pretty solid episode. Definitely not my cleanest episode as I, I did make a couple mistakes, but didn't really end up losing anybody or having anything catastrophic happen. So I'm pretty happy with the outcome there. And again, I think Edward's going to have a, a real heck of a time dealing with all of my stacks. I've got you know, four very powerful stacks coming his way, calling this one episode 15. So yeah, I, I think the, I think as Samuel said, I think we're we're going to be able to just kind of sweep through the enemy here with our with our doom stacks as they are. So, in any case, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one.